Hi, welcome to Open Hand Farm. My name is Penny and you are catching me in one of the most exciting seasons of my year. I am preparing for my garden. I have uh, seedlings that I've planted. We laid some silage tarp down last year on a few places to have extra beds this year. I'm really anxious to pull those off and see what's under them. We also planted some cover crop and I'm excited to till that under and see how that's gonna work as far as nourishing our ground this year. The first thing that I need to do to prepare the layout of my garden is I need to record the size of my beds onto graph paper. I have five different planting areas. I'm going to lay out one of those areas that is a little tricky so that if you have a tricky spot, you'll figure out how to do it. And it's not that hard but it's a great resource for you to have in hand when you are ready to plant that garden bed. So let's lay this out. Okay, before we start this, I wanna to talk to you about graph paper. So I like this larger graph, which is a four by four quad ruled, as opposed to this one, which is an eight by eight. So it takes four of these little blocks to make one of these blocks. But if you have a really big garden area and you don't want to tape pieces of paper together, this might be your better option. But I am going to opt for this one. It's better on my eyes. <laughs> so the first thing we did is we quickly went out, took a little scratch tablet and measured our beds. I say quickly because we did this on a negative four degree day and it was chilly. So um, we have named our beds very cleverly. This one contains the chicken area. So it's the chicken bed. I know, you just can't even believe we're so creative. We started over here. So this is the part that we will plant in. So this is 48 inches. The corner here to the chicken run is 19 feet. Then from the chicken house to the corner here is 15 feet. This whole side here is 32 feet. But if we wanted to plant the areas separately, I wanted to know what those were. So this one is 19, just like down here. And this one is 13. So this little area right here is 13 by 15. This area is 19 by 48. So after we had this, I just kinda made a list so that I would have them all in front of me. And in using this list, and the picture I started working. So we're going to work on our chicken bed. So the first thing I wanna do is cut off the side that has holes in it. And I'm gonna do two sheets because I know I'm gonna need two sheets to make this the size I want it. And I'm just gonna go just past the holes, I'm not gonna cut off any big extra amount. So now I have two pieces of paper. I said that this is a quad ruled paper, which means there are four blocks per inch. So what I need to do is figure out if I need to tape my papers together this way or this way in order to hold my chicken bed when I graph it out. Now each square is going to be one foot for my measurement. So I know that I need 48 feet to go across here. I always ignore the first block and this last little space here. 
because those are not measured appropriately. So I know that I need 48 blocks across and 48 at four per inch would be 12 inches. That means this is wide enough that if I tape this together, I have room for my 12 inches and some to spare. Now I do want to overlap a little bit to make it sturdy. So I'm gonna overlap by about three blocks, but the first thing I wanna do is get rid of this little edge because it's going to interfere when I tape these together. So I just use scissors on this one because I want to leave the inside blue line and just cut off the outside. So I'm going to overlap, but I want to make these lines go together nicely so that the spacing is right. So I like to use a tape runner to keep this in place. So I move it back on one side and run the tape. Then I flip it over and I go down and the rest. So this is my piece of paper that, that I will use to graph out my chicken bed. I'm going to go ahead and lay my ruler down. I'm going to put it along a line at the top. It'll be along a line. I'm going to draw a dot at that corner and I'm going to just put the corner there. Now this particular ruler, there's a little bit of extra space here. So this is really where the 12 inches stop. So I'm gonna do that. So I have a dot there and I have a dot over here and those are represent my 48 feet. Now you'll remember that my long side all the way down is 32 feet. So that represents eight inches. So I'm going to start here in the corner with the corner of the ruler touching that dot and line up right here along the line and I'm going to go down eight inches. So this is 12 inches this way or 48 feet and this one is eight inches this way or 32 feet. Now, if all of this inches and division by four because there's four per inch and blah, blah, blah is driving you insane, just count the squares, it's no big deal. That's how I actually started doing them is I counted the squares. And then I thought, oh, I guess I could just measure them. So you do it however you wanna do it. Now I'm gonna take my 12 inches on this and locate the 12 inches over here and mark that corner. And that should line up with the top corner on the same line. So these dots represent the corners of my chicken bed. I'm going to use a black marking pen and I'm going to mark these lines. Okay, there's my bottom line. Another one of my long sides. All right, now 
I need to indicate where the chicken pin is and where the line divides these two spaces in case I want to use them separately and not as a 32 inch space. I know that the chicken run is 15 feet from this corner right here and it is 13 feet this way. So I'm just going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, then I'm going to count again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 15. Now I'm going to go up 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then count again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now I'm going to count up from here, 13, to get that last corner that I need. Now, I will see if this is on the same line, and it is. So, I just need to connect the dots. Here are these two dots, these two. Now, I also know that this line runs the whole distance of the garden bed. So now I can just take this line and carry it over and this is my chicken run. I know that this is not garden. This is chicken run and chicken house. Now I'm gonna mark my measurements on here. I know that this is 48 feet from there to there, okay? 48 feet. I know that this over here is 19 feet. I know that this is 15 feet, and I know that this is 13 feet. This is 19 feet as well because this is an even area. But I also know that this whole area across here to there is 32 feet. And that will give me information in case I need to measure out space to plant things this direction. So there is how easy it is to lay out a garden bed, even if it's got a little weird measurement in it. I did this to all of my garden beds. Like I said, I have five. Then I took these and I put them on a large piece of paper to represent my yard. I placed them in approximate areas. I did not measure the space between these beds, but I wanted the beds to be the correct measurements. So let me show you. One of my beds was an easy thing to measure. We call this our food forest, and it's 35.8 by 33.5. But this one was a little bit more involved because it has plants in it or trees in it or berries in it that come back every year. So I wanted to know where those items are. So my husband and I went out and to our best ability measured from this fence in or from this fence over or from this 
raised bed over or whatever to figure out where everything is because that will then tell me how much space I have to plant in this year. So if you have an area that has perennials in it, fruit trees, nut trees, whatever, put those in. You wanna have the true measurement of space that you can plant in. I went through my seeds that I was going to plant this year and I made a sheet on Google Sheets that told me the seed that I would be planting, when I needed to start that seed, when that seed needed to go in the ground, or if it was a seed I would direct sow, I put that here. And then any notes that I wanted to remember while I was planting them, and this is the date that I actually got it started or direct sowed. So far I'm up to date on all of these. I'm so proud of myself this year. I'm always running late with my seedlings. So now what I need to do is go through the list of things that I'm planting and decide where they need to be planted. So what I did is I just took some little post-it note things and I wrote potatoes. That's the only thing I wrote on it at first. And I just stuck it, you know, whatever I thought I wanted to plant somewhere, I stuck it on there. Then I went through and looked at what it was planted next to. Was it going to be a problem? Was it not a good plant for it to be planted with for some reason? So I kind of would look up if I wasn't sure how that should be done. And I wanted to look at, like here, I have sweet potatoes. Well, do I have things here that I don't want the vines intermixing with? So I told myself I need to put like a little temporary fence here to keep those vines here. If they go off into the grass, that's fine. I don't care. We'll just mow around them until they're done and then we'll mow it after they're done. I'm not worried about that. And over in the food forest, I knew I had this area over here to plant in and some over here. So I decided to put some tomatoes here this year. So I needed to make sure I had enough space for my trellises to go there. So I measured what I would need for those and still have room to move around them. And I planted in this bed last year and this part of the bed got shaded in the afternoon. So this year I'm planting cabbages and kale and peas and things like that that will appreciate that afternoon shade. And let's look at the potatoes again. I went in and I said, okay, potatoes need to be planted 12 to 18 inches apart this way, and the rows needed to be planted three feet apart. So I went in here and decided I would plant them 18 inches apart. So I made a dot that represented 18 inches, and then I made a dot three feet away from that for my next row. So now I can see how many potatoes I can plant in this area. Now I also told myself last year we had good luck with Dakota and Golden. So that's what I wanna plant here this year. So I remember that. With the sweet potatoes, I have dots representing where they can be planted. And I put a dotted line and told myself here to put a fence around so that I would remember to put a fence around it. And I did that with all of the different things that I want to plant. Cucumbers, I need a simple trellis for them. Peas, I need a little simple trellis for them. For my cabbages, I need to cover them. After I did all of the placement of where I want my vegetables planted this year, I took a picture on my phone 
of each of these beds. And then I printed those pictures out. So here is the picture of my clothesline bed right here. So you'll see I left all those stickers on and they have all the information that I wrote on them, including where I'm going to place things. And I put it in a plastic sleeve and now I can take this to the garden with me. And if I want to write on this, if I want to say, no, I didn't do that, and I write on it with a permanent marker, then that way I have a record of what I actually did do. And I can see where things are. And next year I will have this to compare to. And I can make notes on it as the season goes by and say, this was not enough room for those sweet potatoes. Or... The hot peppers got shaded out by the potatoes or I don't know, whatever note I need to make to keep me from making the same mistake the next year. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take all of these because I have a picture of them. I'm gonna take all of these off and I should have done this before I made any marks on this but I am going to take some contact paper and cover this after I take all of these uh, little stick it notes off. And I might even go in and erase some of these dots or I'll, I'll probably just leave them. And I can mark over the contact paper next year with a vis vis pen or even a permanent marker and figure out what I want to do next year and reuse all of this hard work instead of redoing it every year. So the next step then will be to till all of these garden spaces. We are not big tillers, but these are fairly new areas. Some of them have never been planted in. Some of them, like this bed was tilled last year for the first time and we hit some rocks and it didn't get real deep and we just want to go ahead and till it. Plus we have cover crop on it this year. We want to till that under. We probably won't till every year, but we are going to this year. But then when it comes time to lay down compost to plant in, I can see where that compost needs to be laid down. And that way I can plant directly into the compost. I hope that this has been a help to you with your garden planning, even if you don't do all of these steps, maybe there's something in there that you can glean from and be able to have it help you lay out and plan your garden. If you don't have garden beds, if you have a patio that you put pots on, you might consider making a chart like this and placing circles or squares, whatever shape your pots are, and write in them what you planted where you might find that somewhere throughout the summer, you might need to move those pots if they're in too much shade or too much sun. And then you can make note of that so that the following year, you'll know where you have the most sunshine, where you have shade, and it will help you place things in a better way as the years go on. This is the first year that I have really done this. And it's mostly because I'm a little intimidated with all of this space that I have this year. This is the biggest garden I've ever had. It measures over 4,000 square feet of planting area. And I'm super excited, but it's also a little daunting to think of all of the work that's gonna go into this garden. But I just hope that it is helpful in helping feed people in our community and helping to provide food that I can preserve and be prepared to feed my family with in the following year until we can garden again. Thank you so much for coming along. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are one of my regular viewers, I would ask that you subscribe and even share. That will really help me and my channel grow. 
and hopefully somebody you know can glean information from this as well. Happy garden planning to you. And until next time, blessings on you and yours.